Hi, Michael Bettine here, and back for part three of working with multiple gongs. Now this week I'm going to do something a little different. My regular setup, which I've been sort of using in the past videos, is all packed up for a gig. So I put together a set of gongs that I haven't used as a set before. So this is going to be really myself exploring these sounds and finding out how they work together. So just to give you a quick tour of what we have, we have a 32 inch feisty number three sound creation earth from the 80s. We have a 28 inch feisty Jupiter planet gong. That's about 18 years old. We have a number eight bronze gong up here. Down here we have a number four bronze gong and number nine bronze gong and the number one bronze gong. So this is a whole different sort of setup. I've never really worked with this combination before. I've played with you know, different combinations of some of the gongs but not as a setup. So I want to do, you know, what I've been doing in the past couple of videos is just really explore the sounds. How can I make these work together? Or finding that some of these gongs won't work together. That's just as important. The last thing I want to do is bring a bunch of gongs that I really haven't used out to a session of some sort and find they don't work. Although, <laughs> that would be kind of difficult because I know my gongs so well. I sort of innately can pick them out and know they'll work together. So I'm pretty convinced all of these will work. Along the way, I might throw in some other gongs into the mix just to bring in some different sounds. But let's see how this works. All right.
Okay, so there we go. Very much an improv using various mallets, using the mallet handles themselves. Uh, what was I looking for? Or should I say, what was I listening for? I was listening for sounds. I was listening for the actual notes, the pitch of the gongs, especially in the center. I was listening for the sounds of the overtones, how those blended. And I was listening for the textures of the gongs, especially with the different mallets. How can I bring out different characters? The smaller marimba mallets and that bringing out highs. The larger mallets bringing out lows. Also bringing out more brash sort of textures, bringing out softer textures. Um, and then... You know, listen, how does all this blend? How can I make this musical? Everything I try to do, I try to make sound musical. Even if I'm doing a, like a noise improvisation, to me, I still want it to be musical within that context. So if I'm playing with, with some noise musicians, electronics, guitars, whatever, where they're just you know, creating sort of chaotic sounds, and I'm you know, doing my best to create sort of chaotic sounds too. I still want it to be musical within that context. So I think that's a really important thing that I'm always thinking about is context. What am I playing for? Who is my audience? I don't think I would do all of what I did, all of the sort of sounds at a meditation sort of session because some of them were pretty brash, bright, some of them were kind of jarring. I wouldn't do all of what I did here. Now, if I was doing, if this was a solo presentation at a concert, this was perfect. I mean, I, I brought out a lot of different elements. Uh, or if I was working with other musicians, this probably would fit in real well. Of course, I'd be listening to them and basing things off of what they did. Now, this Saturday, I do have a recording session coming up where I'm supposed to do exactly what I just did, is play eight or nine of these different soundscapes using gongs and creating different textures that other musicians will later overdub on. So we'll see how that turns out. But I like doing this sort of thing, you know, creating these backdrops, backgrounds, or whatever for other people to play on. I sort of think of gongs as almost like scenery in a play. Especially, you know, how you could, if you've actually gone to a real stage play and, and the scenery goes up and down from the ceiling and down comes a house and then down comes a tree or something. I sort of think of this as that same way. These are hanging there like scenery and I'm creating a sonic background.
background or backdrop for whatever other sounds. And oftentimes I will take something like this and then I will overdub percussion on it or drums or other things and use this as a backdrop, background. Yeah, I liked a lot of the sounds. I liked how they combined. If you notice too, when I first played, uh, let me put this guy down here. When I first played, I put together a little three note motif. It was one, two, one, two, one, two, three in the centers of the gongs. Kind of let them fade. And I brought it in again. So there's some repetition. And then it now bringing the other gong in, so it's repetition with variation. Or even more than variation, I'm just, I'm evolving the phrase. So then I went back and I played the same thing again. And if you go back and re-listen to it, re-watch it, I spread that out over more time. But I came up with this motif, and I've never done this before. This is the fun of working with your instruments and improvising. So I heard that in my head, and it's just like, okay, let's go for some sort of melody, try to keep a rhythm with it, sort of a meta rhythm because it's so stretched out, and let's play a melody. Then I think I brought in this gong here, the number nine. from short tones, three short tones, brought in a longer tone. So there's, you know, some difference in there. I could have just gone and hit it, but it's like, no, let's, let's change it up. I've got these center tones, they're sort of bell-like. Yeah, you can hear them ringing on, but, but the main tone is short, and then let's bring in of a little crescendo sound building up and then go back and you know so playing some variations off of this theme and so I did the whole improvisation changed all my mallets and brushes and moved around came back I went back to this for the ending I was thinking okay you know sometimes you <laughs> you're playing and you're thinking so how am I gonna get out of this that's always important to me how do you end something? So it came to me, well, let's go back to the beginning. We'll play that theme again. And then bring in a whole different sound. Okay, let's look at the middle. Uh, things that I did. These are called flares. I believe that's what they're called. Yeah, flares. These are from Regal Tip. I believe they still make them. They're just a kind of a heavy nylon brush with a nice heavy handle that, and they flex a little bit. I like them a lot because you can get some real volume out of them because they're heavier. They do all, they come with a little ring so you can tighten them up. has gone missing on this one but I, I like to kind of leave them open and they give you a different character and if you kind of snap them whip them you can get nice sounds in the middle and then you can use the brushes especially on like the earth gongs because they have the real bumpy surface with the hammer marks and the ridges on the edge here, more so than some of the other gongs. You can get some nice sounds with the brushes. Or if you go on like a smooth gong like this, you can get some sounds. It's nice when you have the ridges. 
So I brought brushes in. That gave it a whole different texture. And you've probably noticed I used the end because it's heavy, it's rounded, it's got a little point on it to bring in that bell sound. And a bigger sound than the brushes are capable of. This is all about just, you know, being creative. I also muted this gong. Another type of technique to do. I took a very small uh, super rub mallet just to get some high frequencies. Some differences. And then over on the number eight here, which is such a kind of a strange gong, I was just getting a little squeaky sounds. Now I can't get them. There we go. And I was stopping and holding the mallet against the gong to sort of stop the sound too. And it kind of, you get this reverb through the gong. It's really kind of a neat little. Or you can dead stop it. So working with texture, trying to change the texture of my sounds instead of just doing what everybody does. You know, that's a big broad stroke. With these high ones, I like to do just little, little strokes and get these little voices, you know. So it's all a part of being creative and thinking and sort of thinking out of the box, working beyond what you normally do with a big padded mallet and maybe a smaller padded mallet. Is buying a whole selection of mallets and working with them and then, as they always say, you know, coloring out of the lines, working out of the box, whatever, playing these mallets using the handles. One in each hand. Here's a, a, a medium rubber, here's a medium yarn. So you're going to get two very different sounds. I mean, I'm not afraid to play with like you know, a big padded mallet and a hard mallet. different textures at the same time. Now another idea I used, because it was an improv, it's, I'm, I'm trying to think back you know, on, on the things I did. Another thing I did do is I was muting. So I was playing like these two here and then pushing against one gong and I usually moving in a circle. That helps to mute the whole face and letting the other gong ring out.
So that's another sort of technique to work with is, is muting. Okay, that probably wraps it up for now. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you got some ideas out of this, some inspiration that you can, you know, go to your gongs, whether you've got one, two, three, or a whole rack full like this, and, you know, play around, experiment, find some new sounds, some new rhythms and everything. So that's it for Cup of Time. We will see you next week. Thanks.